Hey everyone, Reed here. Today I'm going to show you how to use the Groups feature in Power BI to create new columns. More specifically, you'll see how to regroup text values into newly assigned values, but more importantly, you'll learn how to create automatic bins based off numerical values. This last one is fantastic for creating histogram charts like you see here, allowing for quick and easy analysis of the distribution in your data. All right, let's get started. All right, guys, so what I want to do is show you how to create two groups within Power BI, groups based off of text, and then that really cool thing that I mentioned on how to do groups and create bins for those histogram charts that we want to create using numbers. So let's start with the cool one first. And this is the one that, again, I recently discovered that existed in Power BI, and it's very easy to do. We're going to come down here, and let's go ahead and use tuition and state as an example. I have the total tuition and state down here across all colleges per year. And I want to be able to see the distribution of this and where does it reside. So I'm going to go ahead and right click on this. I'm going to go select new group here. And what you'll see is that it creates the title in the name section up here for bins, so tuition and state. I'm just going to go ahead and capitalize that. And the bins for that group type, we can do list or bin. And what I want to do is bin. And then you can do bin type. And this is the only thing you can really customize is size of bins versus number of bins. Now, if I say size of bins, what it's going to do is the bin size down here will create as many unique groups as necessary using this increment. Right now it's 934, that's auto calculated, and it will create as many bins as necessary to go from the lowest value in this tuition by state column to the highest value in this tuition by state column. So that could be 15, 30, or 50 of them. And you can see what the min and max value is up here. It's zero to 74,000. So that's quite a few bins incrementing this way to get up to that. That's close to 75 different bins that would be created. Now, if I wanted less than that, I can just go ahead and say number of bins, and I could do 5, 15, 25, whatever I wanted to have in here. Um, I, if I said 30, you'll see that the number of bins would be here in terms of the count, and then the size of the bins would be over here. And it will recalculate this each time the model is refreshed. Let's go ahead and just do number of bins. I'm going to say 50. I would like to create 50 bins. I'm going to select OK. And what that's done is created a column you can see down here, tuition and state bins. And now if I drag that onto the axis, Boom, there we go. We can now see that distribution down here for all of the values across this. Let's go ahead and make this a little bit bigger. There we go. And we can see these are all the bins and we can find that essentially the that sweet spot right here is right around 13,000 for that bin window. Now the sum total is 47,000. But again, this is really nice to be able to have that in here. And then what you can even do is throw in a lot of uh, the tuition and state column. You can just drag a bunch of those into tooltips. You could do the average. You could do the the min, the max. You can throw all of those in there and get some really quick, easy, and intuitive metrics around this. Let's go ahead and throw in max. Um, and I'll even throw in like an institution ID count. And what I'm using right now, just to mention it, is the college scorecard data. So I'll provide this file at the end of the video. Let's do account distinct. Now, if you hover over that, there we go. There's all this additional information about the values that we're looking at. So we have our, so we have that bin itself, the t sum total, the average, the min, the max, and then that count of institution IDs that are in there. So number of colleges. So it's a great way to do a quick analysis of your data um, and just get a, a quick snapshot into it. And when you're done and you want to publish this to the client, you don't have to keep this. You can go ahead and just right click and delete that bin at the very end of it. All right, and now for the easier and simpler one as well, the other type of group that you can create. So let's say that I have all these in, so let's say that I have the text down here at the bottom that's just a little bit too long for me. That region text, I wanna shorten it up a bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and right click on region. I'm gonna select new group. And I can actually just go ahead and rename these things into shorter sections if I wanted. So I could do Fairbank West. I could say group in there and just get rid of the extra text at the top there. For sake of simplicity for purposes, let me just go ahead and fast forward through this. There we go. I've created a few other ones. And what I've actually done here, as you can see, is that I even created a favorite regions section where I had multiple things in there. This can actually be added right into anything that I need to. So it gives you the option to group as many of these as you want. One thing that's really nice is that include other group. So anything left in those ungrouped values will automatically be reassigned to this. So let's just go ahead and select OK. And by the way, this is the list group type specifically for text-based values when they're non-numerical. Select OK. That will add another little group down here. And if we go ahead and put that onto the axis, there we go. And we can see that some of the ones that I renamed are in there. There's that other group that I mentioned. 
There's my favorite regions. So it's just kind of a quick and easy way to create a new text list column and reassign group names that have been either aggregated or just renamed. Now, generally speaking, I would recommend doing this in Power Query. Most new columns can be created there. So I haven't used groups that much, but that histogram distribution where it can create the bins based off of numerical values, I'm really a fan of that. I didn't actually realize that existed until recently, but it is super helpful for doing quick analysis of your data. So I hope you found this video useful. If you like this video, please click that like button below. And if you have anything to say about this video or would like to suggest a future topic, please add that to the comments below. And if this is your first time to the channel, please click that subscribe button. And otherwise, I will see you in our next video.